Hello and welcome to the Elsa City Steamship Group's first new vessel replacement update series. I'm Sharon and I'm the Marketing and Communications Manager for the group. And today I've got our new vessel replacement project managers, Chris Lingham and Peter Broad with me. Ahead of Chris and Peter moving out to Vietnam to oversee the build of our two new vessels, we thought we'd catch up and chat about this exciting project. So welcome, Chris and Peter. Thank you for speaking with me today. We're really excited to hear about these new vessels and the progress um, that's been made to date. So let's talk about the new Salonian passenger ferry. Can you tell us what difference will passengers feel on board the Salonian 4 compared to the current Salonian 3? And how much more comfortable will the journey be? Hi, Sharon. Thank you. Uh, my name is Chris Lingham. Um, I'm the project manager for the new vessels. Um, well, essentially, the passengers are going to find it a, a very comfortable experience traveling to and fro between Penzance and St. Mary's. The, uh, this vessel is uh, designed based on a century of experience that we've got from operating this route. And with that knowledge that we have of operating on this sea, which as many of our passengers can attest to, it can be quite choppy. Uh, we've designed this vessel uh, to, uh, to cope with this sea state and uh, minimize the, uh, the movement of the vessel in these sea conditions. So there's a few uh, technical uh, designs uh, included in the, the, the vessel which maximize this uh, sea keeping. Uh, in addition to which, the outfitting on board the vessel is to a very high standard uh, with very comfortable seating and uh, accommodations and fixtures and fittings. The vessel's been uh, designed with an elevator linking all three passenger decks. Um, in addition to which, there are toilets, including disabled toilets, on each deck. Further to that, we've introduced two embarkation points on the two main decks so that all these measures of both uh, access on and off the vessel, um, for the passengers moving around the vessel, there's cafes on the two main passenger decks, there's twice the capacity uh, outside uh, seating capacity compared to what we currently have on Salonian. So there's a, a number of measures that we've learned from our experience operating this route, which we've implemented to make this a much more comfortable and uh, enjoyable experience for our passengers. Brilliant. Um We've talked a lot over recent months about anti-roll fins and hull vanes. And just today, would you just explain to us and just tell us a little bit more in a way that anyone can understand what this means for the build so that it's easy for anyone to understand what we're talking about? <laughs> Peter. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm Peter Broad. I'm going to be, I am the new building manager um, overseeing the builds of these vessels. Yeah, we have, we have two um, methods of reducing the rolling of these vessels. One is um, active fins, which most uh, passenger ships, big commercial passenger ships have these days. Um, and they are active, they're like um, aeroplane wings, there are aerofoils, and they are designed to counteract the rolling motion of the vessel. The ship will roll naturally because of the sea, but these uh, will compensate uh, for the rolling motion. Very effectively, uh, we're, we're designing this to uh, specifically for this sea route and they will have a, a significant damping effect on the current vessel, which is not fitted with those. And we also have um, the vane, which is a, a fixed structure on the aft end of the vessel. Um, it has two functions, actually. The primary function is uh, uh, to enhance the uh, performance of the hull. Um, but also in doing so, it actually does provide uh, passive uh, stabilisation. So uh, there are two positively mechanical things which are being built into the hull, as well as optimising the hull form, as Chris said, um, to be a much modern and, and cleaner hull design. So two very positive things to enhance the performance of the vessel in the in the sea areas where we operate. So I guess what we can take away from that is that these new anti-roll fins and the hull vanes is basically going to provide a much smoother journey and a lot less rolling and pitching on the new vessel that you're going to be building for us. Absolutely. Brilliant. That's the plan. 
looking to the future and looking at this new build um for both actually let's talk about Thessalonian and perhaps the, the the freight vessel or we can take them separately but how and what are we doing to plan um in this project for the ships to be more environmentally friendly so um following on from what peter was uh, just mentioning about the hull optimization and the hull vein uh, these two aspects together provide an efficiency saving uh, on the hull by reducing the hull resistance and creating a forward thruster through the hull vein to the vessel, which provides an overall efficiency saving of about 17%, which translate then to 17% uh, reduced consumption of fuel and uh, uh, ultimately a 17% reduction in exhaust emissions. In addition to that, the, the vessels are equipped with uh, exhaust gas treatment systems uh, with, in compliance with tier 3 emission standards. Um, this is a system which um, operates with uh, uh, a catalyst uh, to and the uh, urea injection or add blue, similar to what you have in your diesel car at home, which reduces the nitrogen oxide emissions. Perfect. So let's talk about the passenger side of things really in terms of what do people really want to know so you know w when building these ships are we still going to maintain the generous luggage allowance currently enjoyed by our passengers on board the Salonian? Uh, yes they will uh, the current uh, luggage allowance is 25 kilos um, which is uh, included uh, within the ticket price and uh, if customers have larger items such as camping trailers or other heavy equipment as is typically uh, carried by many of our passengers today then uh, at the point that they're booking their tickets they can check in these heavier freight items for a, an additional fee brilliant we all know that part of the journey on board the salonian people love to sit outside they love to look at the wildlife so with this new build i mean you touched upon outdoor seating how much more additional outdoor seating will there be is there going to be bigger windows for people to enjoy the views from the vessel Perhaps peter what wants one for you very much so um yes the and we're really working on the detailed design now and uh, um even the the, the side windows uh, in the lower passenger areas certainly will be very large for all of the seating areas, uh, making them much lighter and brighter as well. So certainly you'll be able to see the coastline as we're passing the end of uh, Land's End and crossing over to the Sillies. Um, and then, of course, many people uh, like to sit outside. So we actually have much more seating capacity out on the upper decks, around about 250 uh, spaces or uh, seats for, for passengers on the upper decks. Fantastic. So we've talked about the Salonian 4. We can't forget as part of this build, um, we're actually building two vessels. The next um, vessel I'd like to talk about today is the, the, the cargo vessel, the new cargo vessel for the group. Um, I'm just wondering, will the new freight ship run to the same schedule as our current GREE? And what are the benefits um, in regards to increased cargo capacity? What will that ship bring for that service? The short answer to that question is yes, it will. It's going to run the same schedule as uh, Grand Maritha does today. Um, for a point of, uh, to answer your question about the cargo capacity, so this vessel uh, is a slightly larger vessel at 45 metres long compared to Grey at 37. It's got an increased cargo capacity and can carry a, um, a, up to an additional 50 tonnes uh, dead weight of cargo. Um, in addition to that, we've done quite a bit of work with um, cold rooms on board the vessel to carry refrigerated and frozen cargo. Um, there are three separate rooms. Two of these rooms are capable to run as both freezers or fridges, depending on what our freight requirements are. So we've designed in quite a bit of flexibility to uh, manage at the different times of year the, the, the different freight demands that we have. So can you tell us a bit more about the passenger facilities on the new freight ship and how long will the crossing be? Yeah, certainly. The current vessel um, can carry up to six passengers uh, and the, the new one will be 12, so double the capacity. Uh, we're using the same outfitting and the, the designs from the passenger vessel, actually. So the seating will be really, very much enhanced. Uh, there will be uh, like a coffee annex and, and drinks area. Uh, so it's going to be very much um, an improvement on the existing vessel. Um, and the, you asked about the uh, passage from uh, between Penzance and the Elza Silly. 
it's going to be around about four hours. Um, it, it could be potentially quicker, but we will always be constrained by the, the harbour operations, both in, in Penzance and um, uh, at St Mary's. So it's obviously we're not just the only users of the port. Um, so, yes, it could be around about four hours. And how will this new ship be? Is it going to be more reliable than the current Green Marista? It's going to be a lot more reliable than the Green Marista, uh, largely due to the fact that it's a new ship. Absolutely, um, but very, very much so with the Salonian. It's all modern equipment. It's new propulsion equipment, new engines. Um, obviously, all the navigation equipment's new. Um, the cargo handling equipment's going to be new. The refrigeration um, equipment is probably, you know, much more robust and, and giving us more capacity. Um, so yeah, uh, and it's it's going to be a new ship and more than a well, not a forty year old ship. So um, absolutely, it will be uh, more reliable. Yes. A problem we experience currently with our vessels is because of their age, a lot of the machinery and equipment is obsolete. So finding uh, service engineers that are actually still alive and machinery and parts that are available can be very challenging. So with these new vessels and their new, uh, new equipment, it, it's much easier to work with the manufacturers and suppliers and get the support that we need. Chris, um, you've, you mentioned about the environmental friendly elements of, of the vessels that, that, that we're building. Um, is there any other elements that we've forgotten to speak about today? <laughs> yes, there's a couple of extra points actually. Uh, the passenger vessel is designed as a hybrid vessel. And what I mean by that is that in addition to the two uh, large main engines that will provide the propulsion power for the vessel, they are also uh, driven on the, or connected on the gearbox are uh, these electric propulsion motors, which can also act as, um, as what's called a shaft generator to provide electrical power, to produce electrical power. So this gives two benefits. One is that if the engine itself is for some reason not able to drive the propeller, then this electric pr propulsion motor can drive the propeller to provide propulsion for the ship. Um, and the other uh, point, but as I mentioned, when it's uh, with the shaft generating, is that the intention being that it, the way we will operate the vessel in transit is that the auxiliary generators, auxiliary electrical generators will be shut down and the two shaft generators will provide the vessel's electrical power. What this means is that instead of running, say, four engines, two big main engines and two small auxiliaries to provide electrical power and propel the ship, the two main engines will do it all. They will both propel the ship and provide the electrical power to run the various services around the ship, such as the heating and ventilation system and power for the galley and all the lights and navigation equipment, etc. In addition to that, we're also future-proofing the vessel, designing it uh, with the mind that we can install uh, battery power units. And I say that, it might be some other form of alternative power, power unit, but what we're working with, uh, with the Classification Society at the moment, is to evaluate the requirements that we need to be able to install uh, lithium battery units uh, in the lower hold, the lower forward hold of the vessel, so that in the future we've got uh, the option to use alternative power units that would provide some of the vessel's uh, power requirements to reduce the amount of fuel that we're needing to burn in the main engine and thus reduce the exhaust emissions. Brilliant. Chris, Pete, thank you so much. Um, we found that really interesting and we hope the viewers and the watchers of this will also find that interesting. We wish you all the very best in Vietnam and we look forward to future updates. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you.